Hi, everybody, and welcome to this webinar from Retail Pro International and Riot RFID and your Omni Channel Inventory Management Strategy. Uh, my name is Uliana Abatisov. I'm part of the team at Retail Pro, and it's my privilege today to introduce you to our partners at Riot. Um, Riot, um, they're the first, they are the developer of Riot Insights, the industry's first turnkey RFID inventory system. And they're now Retail Pro International's official RFID partner. Uh, available uh, for Retail Pro Prism and legacy versions of Retail Pro. The product is a definite game changer as you're building out your own channel inventory management strategy. Um, and in large part, honestly, because one, it's available in 32 countries, and two, it's affordable. Um, you'll get to hear today from the Riot team. And if you're heading out to NRS Big Show on January 16 to 18, you'll actually get to see them live in the Retail Pro booth, too. Um, so, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to Darren Williams, Delica Buga, and Jason Ziva. Thank you, Uliana. This is uh, Darren Williams, and I am uh, one of the principals over at Riot. Um, and we are very excited to be here uh, today to exchange with you about RFID, uh, Retail Pro, and your omni channel inventory management strategy. Um, so uh, Riot uh, was basically founded uh, on the premise of trying to make RFID uh, simple and affordable and, uh, and, and to have it be plug and play with, uh, with Retail Pro. So I think as we progress through this today, um, you'll, get a pretty, you'll get an appreciation for what we are offering here. So let's uh, just get right to it. A little bit about uh, uh, Riot, this is one of the um, my favorite slides. I like to lead off a lot of presentations with this, but yeah, it's just a quote from Steve Jobs, um, and it's about the iPhone actually. But but the quote is, you know, that every once in a while something comes along that really kind of changes everything as you know it. Um, and I really believe that RFID has that kind of potential in Main Street retail, uh, where one of our biggest um, challenges and kind of our biggest tasks uh, as retailers is stock management. And this just completely revolutionizes um, stock management as you know it. So RFID uh, is really about, you know, imagine taking physical inventory in minutes uh, with a single person before you open uh, in the morning. Um, and th that's the potential of RFID. Um, now imagine that that RFID is simple and affordable and it really just kind of works out of the box with the system you have, Retail Pro, uh, and that's what we've done at Riot. So I want to show you a quick video. Hopefully this will render well, um, but I think kind of seeing uh, is, is worth like a thousand, a thousand words. So let me see if I can um, get this to play here correctly. Okay, so if you're seeing everything, um, what this is, it's, it's going to be a short video clip. It's an actual Riot customer that's a jeans store. And as, they, as you start off the video, you're going to see that they've got a jean wall. There's, you know, jeans on this wall from floor to ceiling. It, it is a smaller shop, um, uh, but you're going to be amazed, I believe, at like how fast they are counting um, all the stock in their store with a single person. Um, and so what you're looking at here now is, 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 a, is a screenshot of the Riot app. Um, this uh, is showing that if you, if you look in closely, you're going to see that there's an expected count of 1,500 items um, at this particular store. And then below that is a list of the departments, uh, kind of the, 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 the quantities by department. And as, they, as you scan, you're going to notice that there's kind of a blue progress bar that shows you your progress against um, the expected count. So what Riot does is it's gonna, it's gonna sync up with Retail Pro, it's gonna get your expected count, and it's gonna allow you to do a physical inventory with RFID. Um, and so let's just take a quick look at this. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me as I talk over this, but um, they're just casually strolling through the store. 
know, they're scanning from about three, four feet away. And as you can see, it's scanning, uh, it's counting items very, very rapidly. They're already uh, over a thousand items just now. Um, kind of working their way slowly through the store. You can see the progress indicators. Um, by department. So what's showing on that list is what remains to be counted. So as things are counted complete, they fall off the list. I think they're over, uh, over 1,200 items now. You know, and, that, and there you have it. So in a matter of 70 seconds, uh, actually a little bit less, they have um, counted their entire, entire sales for uh, 1,411 items out of the expected 1,500. Uh, just after this, they'll switch to their back stock um, and scan that as well. Um, but I think if you just imagine this in your own stores with a single person being able to count the entire stock very accurately, uh, you know, in a handful of minutes before opening, you know, that's, uh, that's truly game changing. Let's get back to the presentation here. So maybe a little bit about how RFID works for those of you that aren't familiar with it. Um, essentially what we're gonna provide you is everything you need, uh, including an RFID printer, an RFID printer is gonna work you know, very similar to your existing label printer. It's just that uh, it's gonna be printing and programming RFID tags as it goes. So in the middle there, we have a picture of the backside of an RFID tag. It's showing kind of the squiggles are actually the, the radio antenna. And the little dot in the middle, which you probably can't even see, is the actual chip. And what gets programmed into that chip is the barcode number and a unique serial number. So it's actually not even possible to uh, read the tag twice because it's uh, a unique tag with a unique serial number. And then on the right, you've got the RFID scanner. And what it does is it transmits radio waves uh, at the tags and that's how it reads them. It reads them with radio waves uh, and hundreds of tags per second instead of the old fashioned way of, of manual um, barcode scanning. So, you know, why, why is this helpful? Why does this matter uh, in your omni-channel strategy? And I think, you know, in particularly, uh, I mean, there's been a trend underway for quite some time of people, you know, beginning their consumer uh, journeys online. Um, and that's only been accelerated during the pandemic when people weren't able to visit stores. And so with the spotlight on you know, online commerce or e-commerce, um, it's becoming super critical to make sure that you've got your stock uh, accuracy very high. So you know, out of stock online um, is really not a very good thing. That customer with a few mouse clicks can usually find that item or a similar item elsewhere. So you know, saying you're out of stock or having incorrect stock it has some consequences um, in the online world. Same thing on order cancellations. So saying you have stock uh, when you don't, you know, really it's, it's a terrible customer experience when someone needs to receive an order cancellation. You know, another, the flip side of it is in store, you're getting requests for items to uh, pick and pack and make available for either customers to pick up or to ship out. And it's a pretty frustrating experience. Uh, it's a big waste of time for employees when they think they have something, um, but they're looking all over and can't find it. And uh, you're gonna see in uh, Jason's portion where he shows you a quick demo that one of the cool features of RFID is you can actually search using radio waves uh, for, a, uh, for a particular item. So a lot of times things might not be in plain sight, but they are there. And with the RFID scanner, you're gonna be able to locate them. And then just kind of the consequence of split shipments. Uh, so for people that have multiple stores, you know, if you've got a multiple item order and you have to ship one thing from one store and one thing from another store, you're looking at two shipping costs and that oftentimes will wipe out uh, the profit you might see in an order. 
Um, and then also just, you know, the delays to the customer of, you know, of, of waiting and getting items from different locations. So by increasing your inventory accuracy with uh, RFID, you're really helping solve a lot of the challenges that are cropping up with omni-channel retail. And then let's not forget uh, the age-old retail problems too. So, you know, not on the shelf. Um, I think a lot of us suffer from customers coming into our stores, looking for a size or color um, that's just not on the sales floor. Um, and, um, you know, and then they have to find an associate, you know, see if that person can check if there's some back stock. You know, it's just not an ideal scenario. A lot of times customers will just turn around um, and, you know, and go elsewhere. So it, it results in lost sales. Um, same thing uh, in the area of shrink, age old problem, items are getting stolen. And the challenge is you don't even know what those items are until you do a physical inventory. And so you're not able to you know, focus on problem items. You're not able to focus on problem stores because you just don't know um, until you take a physical inventory. And with RFID, you know, many of our retailers are taking inventory you know, once a week or even daily um, because they can do it before they open in the morning. And then the obvious part of this, I think you've already jumped to this conclusion on your own, that's just the stock management labor. There are thousands and thousands of dollars every year for every store and just counting items for physical inventory, you know, the, the weekend, uh, the week in, week out process of receiving new inventory, um, you know, calculating what needs to be restocked, you know, going through the store and making a note of, I need some of this, I need some of that, you know, uh, reordering, searching for items. These are all very time consuming and expensive tasks um, in a retail store and RFID streamlines these uh, in an amazing way. And then just mistakes, you know, people make counting mistakes and they make them all the time um, despite good intentions. And with RFID, it's actually not possible uh, to make a mistake. And then there's this concept of critical absences. And, and that's like when you actually think you have something in the store, but you don't. Um, you know, and you are not reordering it or you're telling people you have it and you're having to cancel their orders. Um, you know, so critical absences is another thing that's very well addressed um, by RFID. Again, so this, this solves real problems. You know, it's going to help you reduce lost sales. Um, it's going to cut your losses from shrink. You know, when you have that timely um, shrink information, you're able to focus on the items or the stores that are causing you problems um, before they get out of control. Um, and again, obviously reducing stock management costs. And the, and the end game here is, is just improving customer satisfaction in your stores. And you know, the interesting thing is a lot of people are like, well, wow, this is cool new technology. Um, and the funny thing about it, I, I suppose, is it's really not so new. Um, RFID is actually in use all around you at stores that you know. Uh, Macy's, Lululemon, Zara, Nordstrom, Tommy Bahama, Target, Nike, uh, all of these retailers and many, many more are using RFID in the way that we've just shown you um, in their stores um, all the time. Um, what's new is, uh, is trying to make this practical and affordable um, for smaller retailers. So, you know, the number of stores out there, I mean, that includes 4,000 plus Riot stores. So Riot's installed in nearly 100 brands, um, yeah, more than 4,000 stores. I think we've actually crossed the 5,000 store mark um, around the world. And so Riot is not new to RFID. Um, our roots are in RFID for some fairly significant uh, retailers. And, and what we've been really focusing on now is making that same system um, practical and affordable for uh, for smaller retailers. And here's just a couple of uh, of actual retail pro users that have already signed up. I think we've crossed the 30 company mark. We're probably closing in on the 100 store mark um, with retail pro um, customers using Riot RFID. So so again, this this is not a uh, bleeding edge. This is something that is absolutely happening all around you, including at other um, retail pro um, retailers. Or, or retailers using Retail Pro. So the package we put together, we call it RFID for Retail Pro. It's basically everything you need. Um, and we try to price it uh, very practically, very affordably. 
Um, so the base system starts off at like 100 bucks a month um, per store. And then we also offer up um, scanners and printers and tags. So basically all the things that you need. Um, so RFID scanners, you know, those uh, start off on, a, on a, B, a buy now, pay later plan starting at about 50 bucks a month. Or, or there's also a purchase upfront option for those that wish. Um, same thing on the Zebra printers. Um, those start off at about 40 bucks a month. Um, and there's also an upfront purchase option. You know, tags are ranging anywhere from like three cents to, to somewhere in the eight cent range. So three cent at extreme volume. Um, eight cent at kind of the mid, mid volumes, which is typically what we're seeing with Retail Pro um, uh, customers. Uh, but these prices, uh, I think to note, are dropping each and every year. We're actually thinking that we are going to see our first um, two cent tags um, at extreme volumes um, in 2022, which is pretty exciting. So the, the costs just keep coming down. Um, and then we include online training and support, et cetera. There's, there's really just no extra charge for that. And like I said, we're, we're including everything you need, the printers, the scanners, the tags, the training, we've really made this turnkey. And getting started is uh, super easy. It's, it's a sign up process online. Um, you're just gonna indicate the number of stores. You're gonna indicate how many scanners and printers you want. You're gonna be able to select some tags and put those into your cart. You simply check out uh, or sign up for the buy now, pay later option. Um, and then we pick and pack a box that shows up uh, at your doorstep a few days later. Um, from that point, it's just a matter of scheduling um, uh, 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 or making an appointment with one of our techs, and we will install what we call the, the Retail Pro Connector, um, and we'll have you up and running typically in less than an hour, believe it or not. So this is, it's hardly even a project. And then boom, you're off to the races and you're able to print your RFID tags and, and start uh, uh, your RFID scanning. And so, you know, listen, a lot of people ask about ROI. And, you know, I, I think aside from the very obvious stuff that we're talking about here, I mean, th there are measurable and significant cost reductions uh, in the term, in the, in, uh, in the form of like labor savings, in the form of reduced shrink, um, and in the form of uh, fewer lost sales or, or sales uplift or sales increase, if you want to think of it that way, but just basically, you know, not losing sales to things being not on the shelf or not available on your website. And actually, um, we'll, we'll send this out as well, but we've got a little ROI calculator um, that some of you might be interested um, in playing with your own numbers. But this is an example of you know, uh, a retailer that's got two stores, they're doing two physical inventories a year, um, and they are bringing in people uh, to prep the store, then they're bringing in you know, a group of people to do counts late into the night. Um, you know, they're having to come in the following day and, and do follow-ups. You know, but they're you know, but they're spending over six thousand dollars a year on their physical inventory labor alone. Um, then on the um, pardon me here. Uh, then on the um, store closure side, the, this this particular retailer closes their stores. Um, during physical inventory. So they have some lost um, sales there. Um, then like they did a calculation on receiving labor, you know, how many um, staff they have, how many hours a week, you know, receiving stock, um, you, know, count, you know, scanning it in manually with barcodes and, and just the labor savings they have by scanning it with RFID. You know, just the, the time it takes for them to go through the store with a clipboard and, and take note of the things they need to restock has now been automated with RFID. You know, on the shrink side, because they had timely um, information on shrink, they, they had a 25% reduction in their shrink from prior years, uh, which added up to a, be a fair amount of money. And then this was a basically an estimate, um, but the idea is that, you know, they felt that they were having at least a couple of sales um, each week um, at each store that, uh, that weren't lost because the product was actually on shelf where it should be. Um, instead of um, you know in the back room where customers couldn't see it, and then and then just you know customer experience. I mean, bottom line is when you've got accurate inventory and you've got inventory on the shelves and you've got inventory available online and you're able to ship what you commit. You know that's just a better customer experience. 
And that's uh, what we're all striving, I believe, to offer. Kick back to the uh, presentation here. And then I'm gonna have uh, uh, my colleague Jason uh, is going to uh, help us out with a, um, a short uh, demo here. So let me um, switch this over to Jason. I think. Thanks, Darren. Julia, hold on a second here. Jason, okay. Okay, so hopefully we're gonna be seeing Jason's screen here. There we go. Okay, hi everyone. I'm gonna try and keep this demo short and sweet um, and hopefully we can go through a couple of Q and A's on specifics at the end or we'll go through um, private sessions with um, interested parties. Um, so as Darren mentioned, we've got a Retail Pro connector which will um, synchronize data directly from your Retail Pro system, whether that's Retail Pro 8, 9, or Prism, um, and synchronize that up to the Riot Cloud. Um, and the second part is a plugin which will allow you to print your RFID barcode directly out of Retail Pro, um, you know, from your merchandise screen, from your Steven vouchers, uh, ASNs, and purchase orders. So just to give you a quick teaser on what that stuff looks like. Um, in our tray over here, we've got our Riot connector, um, our settings file where we're going to configure, you know, uh, our mapping and um, usernames, passwords, etc. Um, we're going to synchronize up your item master catalog or, or inventory master, um, quantities per location, uh, your store list, um, and then once you've accepted adjustments on the Riot side, we'll import those as um, Retail Pro adjustments and immediately um, update your inventory. So we're essentially bypassing your Retail Pro um, physical inventory module. Uh, Riot will be placed in that particular module. <clears throat> so just to give you a quick uh, intro here, if we go into inventory, um, we've added a print RFID tags button um, to your menu. Um, this will allow you again to print one-off tags, print batch tags, um, or, or batch printed tags, and then the same sort of option um, within with vouchers, ASNs, purchase orders. So, look at form view, take a look at, we've got 10 items in here and the same option, uh, you know, to go and print out your tags. Uh, I'm gonna jump onto the um, scanner now and give you a quick demo on some of the features available there. Um, as Darren mentioned, <clears throat> we're synchronizing your data directly out of Retail Pro. So in this particular instance, I am connected to site number two or store number two within Retail Pro. And according to my Retail Pro demo system, I've got a expected stock on hand of 215 minutes. Um, we are looking at a list of your departments um, and we can drill down into your classes, subclasses uh, and each individual product within that subclass. In order to start the scan, I'm just gonna hit the green play button and essentially walk around my office and scan all the demo tags that I've got lying around. It gives you a quick idea on how easy and fast um, you know, the system is. Um, and again, as Darren mentioned, we've got our blue indicator bars telling us how close we are to compete in uh, each specific department. So users can you know, use the scanner essentially to direct them um, to which part of the store they need to go and rescan or which part they've missed entirely um, and go and scan those particular areas. Once complete, we can submit our hand scan, which will push this up to the Riot portal, which we'll go and take a look at shortly. Um, we've got an inventory lookup function, um, so I can scan, excuse me, that's my demo system to with me. So back into item lookup, I can scan a particular barcode, it'll give me information about that barcode, what um, stock we have on hand. So in this case, on my sales floor, I've got a quantity of one in size four and a half. 
Um, clients, they're looking for size three and a half. We can click on that um, EPC or serial number and then use the scanner as a Geiger counter. So it's basically going to play hot and cold with me until I get to that particular item. And then lastly, jumping over to our Riot portal. So if we look at our scan from today, uh, I was at store number two, which is Cape Town in my instance. Um, today's scan, submit that. And again, my expected or, or my target of 216, what we've actually counted, uh, whatever variance we may be showing, and then we can drill down into each different department and try and figure out where we over, where we under, and um, you know what we need to, to go and find. Um, once we accept these counts, this will push back into Retail Pro as a as an adjustment memo and update the inventory accordingly. Um, so I'm going to end the demo at this point. Um, we can go through some Q and A's, uh, and as I said, we can set up some individual sessions um, for anybody who's interested in looking at the video. Hey, thanks a lot, Jason. All Thank right. Uh, so. So just for housekeeping, um, you can either, there's a questions panel, feel free please to write in your questions there. Um, if there are no questions, you can also email, uh, email us directly. There will be contact information, and I think you have mine also from uh, just a reminder email. So uh, we'll give a few minutes here for some questions to jump in. Otherwise, um, we will be happy to get your questions directly with us. So um, West is asking, can we program the tags to count as more than one? I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Each tag is unique and has a unique serial number in it. Um, so no, you can't program to count more than once. But if the question is, you know, can I have multiple tags for the same SKU? Uh, and of course, yes, absolutely. So if you have, for example, a red hat and that's got SKU number, you know, 102, um, and you've got 10 of them, uh, they're all going to be encoded as SKU 102 red hat. Um, but inside, it's going to be a unique serial number. Uh, so when you scan those, it's all going to show up as it's going to show up as 10 unique. Um, EPCs, which is the RFID number, that all roll roll back to that same SKU. Not mm -hmm. sure if that answered your question or not. Hopefully it did. Happy to follow up. Feel, if, if, yeah, yeah, feel free to follow up with a, another question, West, if that if there's more clarification needed. Um, Brett is asking, what are available tag sizes for for right of RFID? We've got about, I think it's six or seven standard um, uh, tags in stock uh, for on-demand shipping. You know, we've got like a large sticky label, a medium sticky label, a small st sticky label. I think we've got a paper hang tag, a jewelry tag, and what we refer to as a flag tag. That might be it. I might be missing one or two. Um, but then kind of sky's the limit if you uh, want to design your own tag or, or, or you know, or even uh, there's other standard stock sizes we can get from suppliers. Uh, the only catch on those is the uh, minimum order quantities um, are a little higher and the shipping times um, are a little longer. But um, we've got plenty of tag options for you. Thank you. Nicole uh, was a little bit late to the webinar, so she's asking, is this system for products we've already received off the trucks and print and put tags on, or does this help uh, with receiving items off the truck from vendors when they're delivered to them? So the answer is uh, both, depending on whether those uh, products are already tapped. Um, so for example, many vendors like Nike and Adidas and uh, Lululemon and others are tagging all of their merchandise uh, when they manufacture it, uh, which is becoming more and more of a trend. And so, you know, or we've got some of our customers are actually shipping um, a batch of tags out to their supplier and saying, please put these on my products uh, before you ship them to me. And when they're already RFID tagged, you can actually use RFID to do receiving. Um, now, that's not something we have in Retail Pro at the moment, but we will in the first quarter. Um, it'll be a standard feature available, you know, in, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the base price. Um, but um, uh, 
uh, but it is something that we're doing at, at other customers. So yes, you can use it to receive it off the truck, but it does require that the product already be tagged. Mm -hmm. uh, follow up uh, question is just that are so are you seeing a lot of vendors actually participating with that and tagging for them before they ship to uh, to the retailer? Yeah, the short answer is more and more. Um, and it's it's being driven by people like Target and Macy's who are going to their suppliers and issuing them a mandate uh, that basically states that we won't take your product unless it's RFID tagged. And then many manufacturers uh, are more and more are seeing the advantage advantages uh, even to themselves of you know counting products before they leave their warehouse to verify that their shipments are correct, et cetera, et cetera. So. Short answer, yes, we're seeing a lot of vendors starting to do source tagging. And then um, we're also seeing retailers go to their vendors and just say, please put RFID tags on my products before you ship them to me. And if you can't, then I'll ship you, you know, a FedEx envelope with my tags in it and ask you to you know, apply them before they're shipped. So we're seeing both. Mm -hmm. Right, and so just to kind of confirm with that, then the Riot um, solution is compatible with vendor pre-printed tags then, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, the, short, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so the, the way it works is if, if you're um, following the RFID global standard, everybody encodes tags the same way. Um, so mm -hmm. any, anybody who is shipping a product that has a registered UPC or EAN, um, is every single one of those products would be encoded the same by anybody in the RFID business if they're following the standard. So Riot, of course, um, follows the standard. You know, all of the major manufacturers like Nike, et cetera, follow the standard. So there is uh, kind of universal, um, you know, encodability and there's universal, you know, like readability of RFID tags as long as whomever you're working with is following the standard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Brett is asking, does this upload to Retail Pro like any other scanner? Um, example for like into receipts and vouchers and slips, other things like that. Uh, so right now, like I said, we're shipping uh, the receiving and transfers in Q1. And yes, it will uh, basically update your vouchers, et cetera, in the familiar way. Um, mm -hmm. On the physical inventory side, you know, that's in place right now. And the way that works is it creates uh, an adjustment uh, memo in Retail Pro automatically once you confirm your inventory counts. And so, and then, and then there's a setting of whether you want to, you know, hold those for approval and then process them, or whether you want them to push straight through. Um, and so we've got, uh, you know, we've got customers counting their Retail Pro inventory, you know, each week, um, and then, um, you know. That's a lot of inventories. When, when you've got multiple stores, that's a lot of inventories to approve. So what they've done is, as long as the physical inventory is within uh, the allowed percentage, and these are settings that you can set within Riot, the adjustment memos will go through automatically. Otherwise, they're held, held for, for approval. So, so yes, it will populate Retail Pro in kind of the familiar way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. West is asking, can the $100 a month uh, price be paused for the off-season on seasonal store locations? You know, we've been asked that and are considering that, um, but we're not quite sure how to do that in practice. Um, you know, the system, uh, we don't really have the way to like deprovision the cloud services required to support a customer. And then, you know, what about customers who just want to use it once a year for physical inventory? <laughs> Uh, so we haven't we haven't come up with a solution for that yet, to be honest. Um, but it is something we've been asked and are thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, follow up to West's earlier question. So if he has a box of 20 items, can can they put one tag on the box and have it count as 20 of that item? Um, so the system doesn't currently support RFID carton labels that have an associated, um, you know, SKU carton content. And that would actually require Retail Pro or the ER backend ERP system to be specifying individual carton contents. So the short answer is uh, no. Uh, and that's probably more complicated uh, than it might seem at first blush. Um, we do have a large customer, uh, which we're doing that for now. In fact, we're putting tunnel readers in their distribution center 
that read the interior contents of the box uh, compared to the outside, you know, barcode label that's on the box. Um, but that that's a whole different animal um, than what we're talking about here with just RFID for Retail Pro. So these are features that with Riot, uh, we, we always say features to grow on. You know, those are things that we can introduce to you, uh, you know, should you have a strong interest. But the base, um, you know, Riot for, for Retail Pro package um, is not doing carton comparisons. Okay, thank you. Nicole asks, is the RFID tag based on the USPC codes? Yes. Okay. Um, Adrian asks, how would you isolate the groups of items to scan so that the RFID scanner does not overscan tags that are not supposed to be scanned? Uh, so if you're trying to count uh, just a department, for example, you can do that. So when you start your scan, you can select which departments you want to scan and focus your scan on just those items. And a lot of people are used to doing that, right? So um, they'll do cycle counts of certain vendors or certain products um, just because they don't want to stop and stay all night to count everything. Um, but, but we also say, so listen, yes, if you want to count just one department in 38 seconds, you can, um, or you could spend you know, five minutes and count your entire store. Um, so it really kind of becomes splitting hairs as to whether you want to count just the department or your whole store uh, in many cases. Um, so it's, it's kind of a new way of thinking about things. Um, but again, the short answer is yes, you can um, select a specific department or departments and count just those. Mm, thank you. James wants to know, can the RFID number be used for security tracking? So for example, if the product walks out of the store without being sold? Um, again, the short answer is yes, but there, it's more complicated than that. Um, so the RFID radio frequency is different than the radio frequency of your existing security gates, um, but you can buy what's called a dual tag. So on that tag is essentially uh, an RFID chip that will set off your security gates, your existing security gates, and there's also an RFID chip um, for the UHF RFID that we use for physical inventory and counting. So it is two different radio frequencies. There are dual tags, um, but the dual tags do cost a little bit more. Okay. Pam wants to know, is there an option to transfer stock from the back room to the selling floor for replenishment? Uh, you can, but that's going to involve either manually scanning each item as you uh, bring it from the sales floor or from the back stock to the sales floor or reverse or putting in a transfer station uh, where you scan items and indicate directionality or putting in like a portal reader. All three of those are kind of advanced options that we typically um, steer people away from. We do have larger customers doing that, uh, but it's, 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 it's quite a bit to manage from a stock management standpoint, and it's not included in our, in our base system. But if you have a customer or you are a customer that, that wants to look at that and, and you don't mind spending tens of thousands of dollars on fixed infrastructure and cabling and things like that to put in readers that will do that, you certainly can, um, I guess is the short answer. Okay, Long Brett answer. asks, um, is, our, is right, uh, the solution is it supported and and it's directly by right and is training done directly by right so yes so we we basically have do-it-yourself training videos um, that you can watch uh, at your leisure we offer uh, so basically 24 7 email support and questions is just part of the base package um, and then just part of activation we spend a couple of hours doing what we call jump start training um, so that's available from Riot directly, as well as uh, uh, typically your business partner. Um, and then um, you can request um, either additional, you know, one-on-one -on -one training um, for an hourly fee, or you can attend kind of our group webinar, group training um, webinars or workshops uh, for free uh, when we have those scheduled on a regular basis. Perfect. Another question from Brett. 
Uh, what is the RFID printout? Does it utilize the ALU, um, item number, et cetera, or just UPC? And if just the UPC and the user isn't using that, um, would the UPC need to be added for each item? Brett, those are good questions. Um, so the RFID uh, standard is based on using either a UPC or an EAM. So um, when retailers don't use um, essentially a, a standard UPC or EAN, what the Riot system does is in the background, it assigns a mock uh, UPC or what we call G10. And it will use that for the RFID encoding and it will map it back to your ALU or whatever it is that you're using. So, um, so the answer is uh, the global standard is based on a UPC or EAN. If you're using those, Riot will encode using that number. And if you're not using those, Riot will automatically assign a mock UPC and, uh, and map it associated with uh, whatever ALU you're working with. So it works uh, either way or even in a mixed way. Um, Garen, just to add to that um, question, um, we use a document designer similar to what you've got in Retail Pro, so we can add you know, different fields to that tag design. So if you want to see item number or if you are using ALU, uh, if you want to show description three and four, we can add those fields directly to that tag layer. Thank you. Um, Pam asks, does Riot do away with the aisle bin row inventory locations, like in a warehouse, and can Riot help with picking an order in the warehouse? So we do, uh, yeah, we don't, the, the nature of RFID is it reads everything in sight whether you want it to or not. Um, so it does, it's not very practical in an aisle, you know, uh, you know, aisle bin uh, type situation um, for segmenting it to a bin. Um, that really requires op uh, either optical scanning or built-in shelf readers in every bin, which is a fairly complex proposition. So um, no, it's not typically used for um, pick pack ship verification. Um, usually that's done with optics. Thank you. Um, Nicole wants to know, what do these tags, the RFID tags look like? They look like everyday. Um, they look like everyday barcode um, or everyday labels that you're currently using. So there's a standard, uh, and, and, they, and again, they come in multiple um, standard or stock. Uh, we have multiple um, formats that are in stock, as well as um, um, a custom one. But yeah, so I think our standard one is like a one by two inch label, there's a jewelry label, there's a paper hang tag. Uh, there's a good number of just standard standard sizes. They, they look exactly like the, the labels you're using. Now it's just that inside is a, a paper thin um, antenna and chip. Mm. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, looks like that was it for the questions. Well, that was a good amount of questions there from you guys. So thank you for, yeah. for all of that from everybody. Um, again, for future, for other questions that you might have, the emails were on the screen there, as well as a link that you can um, follow. We will send the presentation out to you, the recording. Um, so you can follow that link uh, to, to have a personal conversation with the Riot team. Uh, make sure you get all of your specific questions answered and see you know, just how well uh, of a fit would this product be for your needs, for what you need to accomplish. So do feel free to contact the Riot team um, they are very helpful, very open to all of your questions, and 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 are clearly very familiar with retail play as well. And so um, they'll they'll be able to answer all of those questions for you. Thank you again so much for joining us for this webinar. Um, watch your email inboxes in the next couple of days for for the link to the video, and just again the link to uh, where you can request a demo and a further consultation on that. And um, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Hope you had a great holiday. Um, this past weekend, and um, thank you all. Thanks, Juliana. Thank you, everyone. Alrighty, ta-ta.